listening hard for you? I, this is what it looks like when you're listening. This is you listening, right? This is you. I'm not talking. What do I do with my face while the other people talk? It used to be, I think, the way that we stayed sane was having offline conversations in the, you know, in the green room, in the hallway, and now it's like, save it for the pod. Like, we're monetizing all of our conversations, like, for public consumption. It's hard to pinpoint exactly when Andrew Schultz jumped the shark, whether it was scamming his audience after he couldn't get a streaming deal for his comedy special, fishing for controversy with his haircut and moustache, or maybe it was death by a thousand cuts, constantly interrupting his guests, his exaggerated Jimmy Fallon-esque laughter, or even his degenerate epiphanies where he discovers things in real time that are seemingly obvious to the rest of us. But there was one podcast in particular that some people think really signified the beginning of his downfall. On April 5th, 2023, female comedian Whitney Cummings made her second appearance on Flagrant, and it was an absolute disaster, not just for her, but also for Schultz. For a lot of people, this marked the first time they saw Andrew's true colours. His controlling, toxic, patronising personality came through so strong that at times it was hard to watch. I'm going to take you through a detailed recap of this episode because, apart from exposing Schultz's toxic personality, we finally got to understand why Whitney Cummings is so broken. See, Whitney thinks she's funnier and better looking than she really is. She's too smart for her own good and gets in her own head and tries to rationalize her public image. For me, it's like I get defensive because I go, when you say I'm not funny and all this bullshit, you're you're coming for the people that paid money to see me, and I have a I'm protective of them. So I think that's when it, I take that personal because you're saying my fans are dumb. Everyone that came and laughed and honked and whatever the hell we were mm. going through, I'm like, I know that you guys laughed, and if anyone says this isn't good, they're judging you. Like I went all over the country, I went everywhere, and um, I just really feel good about that. I don't even know if I'm good at podcasting. That's we the other thing. Are, we are, but are, I think you are, but it's a very different thing. Like you have celebrities on and you prepare and you do all this stuff and I respect that, but it's like what we do is just a I'm little insecure, different. Because I'm insecure, Tim. I, I, don't, I don't have the well, white man thing of I'm just like, who wouldn't want to hear me talk for three hours about anything? Like I don't, right. I'm not allowed to be boring. I have to be twice as good to get half as much respect. Um, okay. You disagree? I mean, uh, maybe. Well, how so? I don't know, you have to be twice as good? I mean, I just- To get half as much respect? I, Being an unfunny comic must be the hardest thing to deal with for her because it's the last thing that she's willing to accept. She blames everything and anything before acknowledging that she's just not funny. But it's not that simple, because in this episode of Flagrant, Whitney said the quiet bit out loud and exposed both Schultz and Rogan for over-exploiting their fan bases for the money. It's almost like Whitney got red-pilled and the comedy Matrix is trying to shut her down. So, like I said, there's a lot to cover here, and to fully understand the whole picture, we have to go back to Whitney's first appearance on Flagrant from 2022, where she made one of the biggest mistakes of her comedy career. She punched down on the biggest comedy fan demographic, young men. To me, I think it's interesting this time we're in like podcasts, not this one, like I love this podcast, it's just jokes like a lot of podcasts that male comedians do yeah. is like just them talking about like their depression and like their anxiety attacks it's amazing to me that male comics need to prove that they're like vulnerable and sad right. whereas like i can't do it specifically i still specifically? need to prove that i'm funny yeah. Yeah, i feel yeah. like guys like there's a lot of like when i need to talk about my panic attacks I'm like ugh, i hate that <laughs> that i hate woody allen for that reason i don't like men uh bragging about being weak it makes me sick and so when you combine her complete disregard for men with mental health issues, combined with her ongoing crusade to play the female comedian victim, as well as her constant whining and postulating about why people don't like her, she ended up digging herself a hole that she still, to this day, has not managed to climb out of, and ended up in tears on Howie Mandel's show after enduring years of backlash across all of her social media. The amount of... It, I, like hate I get is so intense and I never acknowledge it and I never talk about it. There's a lot of emotion that I never like process from all that, you know, because it was like, like I think people think my life is like so easy or something and that I have like money or whatever. So they're just like, I can just be a total punching bag or maybe it's because I did the roast. We get paid to try to entertain people. So when people are not getting paid and their hobby is just to trash the people that are trying to spread joy, it's like, 
it, it sucks a little bit because then I go like, well, who am I doing this for? So much embarrassment about that whole time because I was so publicly embarrassed. Like it was like t trashing people on Twitter was like pretty new. I was trashed by like some people I re like Alex Sulkin and like writers that I really respected. I was it became this punchline. I was like, they made fun of me on SNL. It was like the dreams that I had was like, oh, like SNL is making fun of me. Like I'll never get to do that. You know what I mean? Like it was just like. But it, you don't see that as a badge of honor? I think I do now, but I always wanted to be in the club and I became the thing the cool kids made fun of. Yet again, we have another example of a Rogan comedian flying too close to the sun and getting burnt. By 2022, Whitney Cummings had cemented her reputation as the whining female comedian who not only wasn't funny, but openly attacked men with mental health issues for being weak-minded, only to suffer her own public mental breakdown months after declaring weak men were disgusting. So, carrying her Brendan Schaub-sized baggage on her second appearance on Flagrant in April of 2023, both Andrew and Whitney were desperately trying to rebuild her image as a funny comedian and shake off all the negativity that was following her around like a bad smell. She was focused only on one thing. Just be funny. She wanted to show that she could roll with the punches and hang with the boys. What's up with you? What's up with you today? Why do you you want to fight with me today? Not like I didn't want to fight. <laughs> you want to fight with me today? What's going on? Always do fight. You're Why do you look this? at me with these faces like it's difficult? She this can't control is, that. Is, is I, listening hard for you? I, this is what it looks like when you're listening. This is you listening, right? Yeah, this is you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not talking. What do I do with my face while the other people talk? She's been hanging out with the Whitney robot too long. That's, That's what it is. That's the problem. This is how you age. They're too reactive when you're listening. Even right now, you're trying to not do it. I and know, you're just pursing of... your lips like a... I know. I'm just like... <laughs> No, you just said that I didn't watch any of the roast. Uh, no, I just. Um, Is that what you just said? I just said. What did you just say? Uh, I that I didn't watch one minute of the roast. No, I was said I sent you a link. And just I, tell me what you said. Don't do the like the the golden retriever outside the car window on the highway face. <laughs> <laughs> just let's just talk to each other. I this. love that you just call me a dog and no. Like, no, that was, like, let's not pretend that you have become a complete. Dork. I listened to your last episode <laughs> where you guys were like, and we're talking about why women are more admitted into college more and that men don't, like, who gives a sh Why did you guys become such dorks? Who cares? Thanks. Free tape! What Thanks. the Come free on. Tape? I'm you know team what Andrew Tate, like, bro. Free tape! Yeah. Dude, I was down when you guys were like hanging out with Alex Jones and yeah. the fake <laughs> star from North Korea and now you guys are like, the yeah. fake yeah. 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 Like, wow. like, That was like the three weeks. I don't Please. know. Now you guys are like, and the Pew Research study says that incels, like, who cares? Yeah, but young yeah, are your no. fans Soccer incels? Soccer getting shots from Whitney for yeah, no reason. Soccer. Didn't you put a whole movie out called The Female Brain that was just like the girl version of what you just said? Are you um, uh, asking a rhetorical question given the fact you're in the movie? No. I don't need someone yelling at me about rape with that mustache. Because that's exactly <laughs> every time I have yeah, someone has what attempted a funny to funny thing me. to scream at a woman. Nobody wants to <laughs> And you're like, stop saying that. Except in shiny Luigi over here. Is this like the comic. new Adderall? Is this like the new Adderall? <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Is this the new Adderall? Badge? I want I feel Adderall. like you got a wonky badge. No, this I got feels it. Like I'm on a, three Zins. What's a Zins? Oh, this is like a the pa the nicotine. Nicotine, yeah. Okay, got and it, got peptides. it. So I don't know what you guys think about that little edit. You can let me know in the comments below, but it was basically like that for the whole first 20 minutes of the podcast. It was wild. It was chaotic. They were throwing around roasts and one-liners like they were going out of fashion. And if you could get past the anxiety-inducing energy, some of it was actually kind of funny. But that seems to be the flagrant way these days. They copied the handheld camera zooms from Logan Paul's Impulsive podcast, and then after the energy dies down, they go to a more conventional coverage structure with static shots and slower cuts as they relax into a slow burn conversation. However, just before they came to the end of the high energy fast cuts and shaky camera, Whitney fumbled her way through the whole, it's hard being a female comic, Yet again, she dug herself a hole that wasn't going to be easy to climb out of. Dude, I love doing corporate gigs because it's also like, it's a big business, I think, for more like female comics. Because, you know, like being a stand up as a woman, it's not a really, it's not a business. It's not, a, it's not a viable. Yeah. Yeah, Can you tell us how hard it is? Like, I'm not saying it's hard. Tell us how hard it is to I'm be a female it's, comic. Like, it's, it's that's not, what we love to listen to. I'm, like, that's what I'm saying. I think it's hard to be it's a. It's so tough on the road. No, it's not what I. <laughs> 
Zed, what are and you God's doing? trying to tell you to go back to the hotel. No one knows. This is so different than being a woman anywhere else have... in life. <laughs> not... How is being a comic on the road any different than just going out to a bar? I always hear this from female comics. They're like, guys always try to go back to your hotel. And it's like, look at the face again. You're listening uh, no, again. I just you put on I, your you're listening just putting face. Words in my I would mouth. rather, I'd rather you look at me and just think about like a like a dog bone. Just think about a bone. <laughs> Just think about a bone. Think about your happy face and then look like this when I'm talking to you. <laughs> being a female comic is being in the WNBA. No Why? One, no one wants to see us either. What are you talking about? <laughs> if I got stuck in a Russian prison, none of you would care. You'd be like, that's good for her. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Yeah. That builds character. Oh my come lord! Run the prison. Prison. That's the other thing. I'm looking down the barrel of the female comedians. That like, dude, this doesn't end well. Who does this end well for? Female comedian Joan of Arc or whatever. What's her? Joan, <laughs> Joan Rivers. Rivers. That yeah. ended well for her. It she did not. Yeah. She was killing it. I, I know, think she has so like, much respect. That's true, but I think people that, love her. But she hated towards the end that she was like doing fashion police stuff and so was then like stop doing, doing it. Like I don't celebrity, like, that we're like, like celebrity gossip. I don't like to get into. Don't that. complain about the you choose. Or you become gay. Or you become an activist. Well, I know, that's what I'm yeah. saying, no. Yeah, I think Andrew was on the money with that take. No one's forcing female comics to do any type of material. They choose their own way, so it's ultimately up to them to decide what genre of comedy they want to be known for. But it seems like that really isn't the problem for Whitney. After becoming known as the female comic who punches down on guys with mental health issues, she ironically ended up putting on a display of just how broken she is. For those of you who don't know, she apparently had a rough upbringing and recently lost her mother who she had a troubled relationship with, and so as a result, she found herself switching teams and shacking up with another woman. Sound so wait, nice, really won't touch you. Girl? Yeah, I mean, it's like you know my mom just me, died. Honestly? Yeah. Don't grief, do the grief mom does, died thing and grief, now we gotta feel bad. But I don't, why, you did that. I feel don't great about it. That. It's a relief. I'm don't glad my do mom died. That. She was a hate, she was a, it was not, didn't love me much. <laughs> Welcome, yo. Yeah, dude. Welcome was, to the club, my yo. My mom was an asshole, dude. I really? Mean, she, yeah, she put me into like modeling when I was a teenager. Like, but, but now you're but, now you're sliding that meat over to a girl, right? Like, well, no, it's what's not like super serious. It's just like grief does wild. Sh do you know what I mean? I need to know did what's you, going on. Did you did come you, on here. On, you on. say you're a big old bull dyke out of the nowhere. Hold on. Right? I'm not a bull dyke. I come just, on. Did, what did Emma take down your Die Hard poster? What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> what's going on at home? Andrew? You come in. What's going on at home? You come in and you tell me that you're lying what's about something. What's going on? Are you oh I need to get to the bottom are of it. Are you shooting blanks? Why <laughs> yes. are you such a grump? Yes. How am I grumpy? <laughs> you have some rage at me, Andrew. This is a new kind of rage. This is a good defensive strategy. You come in here. You uh, why accuse. Do I even this have is to gaslighting. Be this is gaslighting. Do you learn this from your lesbians? Yes. <laughs> She's been dating women now. She knows they, all the now tricks. Now they know how to do it. I've always you been a woman. You come in here. I've always been a woman. What are you talking about? Dating women. I've, yeah. Yeah. Yes, this is the first time I've actually dated a woman. It's a, it's actually just like a little more like helpful. Do you know what I'm saying? Like oh, you get. God. <laughs> Is this just the first time you've had did a you female just friend? Prove, no, no. Uh, yeah, did you just, just prove what I'm saying? I literally said crazy. you want to be with Let's some company that can be an assistance to you, and then you're like, you know what? It's just a little more helpful. You know what, guys? Have another this. woman Let's around. Let's talk about something you guys want to talk about. Let's, Let's. talk about how uh, more women are being admitted to universities <laughs> these days than men. How do you yeah, yeah. feel about it? Where did you go to school? Who gives a shit? UPenn. You went to UPenn. Yes, I did. Damn. Got you. Mm -hmm. okay. Ivy's. Yep, yep. Yeah. I like how Andrew has his mustache. Yeah, it's it's an not ivy. long enough they to They count you pen as an ivy? Yep. Yes, yeah, it's, it's very much an ivy. Really? <laughs> yeah. Not yeah. really, though. Yeah, no, it is like actually an it's ivy. Like one, it's like Stanford, no, where it's like, no, not no, really. No, no. But <laughs> So clearly there's a few things going on here, right? She's grieving, she's receiving a ton of hate from the internet, and she's struggling to rationalize all of this in her head. All the while, she's also just trying to be funny. It's just like, there's a point where you realize like, am I my mother's daughter? Am I my own person? And I guess I never got to be my own person yeah. just because I was in the shadow of her illness. So I, I think, think you suffer from uh, being too smart sometimes, where I think that you can like intellectualize every aspect of your behavior and find a justification for it somewhere on the I think internet. that's what we do as stand-ups, but when you turn on yourself, like we're these, you know, analysts, like, like You almost need to be able to like shut your brain off and just be... 
you know, to quote Liver King Primal for a second. I'm trying, dude. But All being a comic is your most authentic state. I genuinely mean that. Yeah, like, for, for sure. I think being a person is way harder for when you. you grab an alcoholic call, being, that's what you are. You're a comic. Like you're making performer. people laugh. Yeah. You're like doing, literally getting yeah. people drink. This is you. This like, is you being in this kind of manic state, making things funny, like roasting, having great ideas, always putting have them to be together. Ten steps ahead. Sure. Always yeah. have to have nine backup plans for jokes. But what makes you so good about. at this is what makes life so difficult. Okay, so here's the problem, right? Schultz is making some great points, but he's trying too hard to be Joe Rogan. You know the whole, you're super funny, just be your authentic self and everyone will love you. The problem is, in my opinion at least, that she's just not that funny, and when she tries to be authentic, her conversations just turn into therapy sessions, which is exactly what she was criticizing about what men do on podcasts. And this is where Schultz started to expose just how toxic he really is. Clearly, Whitney Cummings shouldn't have been in front of a camera. She was completely broken, struggling to toe the line between being funny and coming off as authentic, and it ended up with this incredibly awkward and cringe-inducing conversation where Schultz tried to fix her on his podcast, but ended up just being condescending and rude. You know what you're doing right now? What? You ever seen somebody go down um, a hill on a skateboard? Someone said this, made this exact thing. Michael Chiklis on my podcast the other day. Oh. He said talking to you is like downhilling. No. You're going down the hill, and, but you're in a speed wobble. Mm -hmm. So we all just need to take a moment. But I think you actually I'm just slowed pee. down. Take that you take yeah. a moment. We were at the same pace and then you got tired. You got tied tied. You think I got tired? Well, Not you, at all. you wore yourself out. Mm. And now... Is there another option, maybe? <laughs> you decided to switch gears. What do you think What do you think another option but is? But no, I was just thinking in terms of it. You're being... Stop, this, stop, <laughs> stop, stop. I want to give you a big hug. Stop. What? Stop. Why is everyone... <laughs> Why are you doing this? Stop, 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 stop. What? You're going to get her in her head. Can you say something? Right. No, 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 no. Do you listen. see what's happening? Listen, listen, listen. Can, I just, right Can this I just take this? Can I just take this? Sir. Can I take... Okay. Yes. So... Are, is this your way? You can tell. I know what everyone like I'm not thinks tired. about me. Okay. No, I don't care what anybody thinks about you. Okay. I don't give. A Do you want to go into the? No. Okay. What I'm, what I, me slowing down is not a function of me being tired of you or anything. I was like just that. joking. Okay. I thought just, that's what we did here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just trying to make sure the comments aren't too savage. Dumb. <laughs> Dumb. I'll take unfunny. Is where I draw the line. Them. No, no, I just wanted to. I just wanted to slow down the pace so that you would feel comfortable. But I felt like if I was just going 100, percent then you would have to be defensive. So maybe if I was just chilling and just asking you questions I really want to know about you, then then we'd all be able to chill. I like this. Yeah. What's happening here? What do you want to? Do you want to ask something? I will. <laughs> Where are you going, Mark? I got to pee really fast. Sorry. Okay, good. What I, I mean, these I think these uh, Z Zins should be outlawed. Oh, no, no, those, those are awesome. Can I say? It feels like a lot of energy, quick, and then it kind of. Whitney, can I ask you a question about? Uh... Oh, geez, please don't bring up the Zins too soon, Whitney. Too soon. But you can see how this podcast turned into a train wreck, and as usual, it got worse. Now, what happened next was probably the most interesting part for me in the whole two and a half hour conversation. Schultz goes into full therapist mode and tried to micromanage the conversation to the point where he basically wouldn't let Whitney speak. And then Whitney unexpectedly said the quiet bit out loud. Now, I'm going to pick this up straight after I play this clip, but I just want to make one point real quick just now. I agree with Schultz when he said that Whitney's too smart for her own good sometimes. She's obviously a really intelligent woman with a lot of trauma built up over the years. And what stuck out for me in this next bit was that deep down, I think she discovered that the whole universe she thought she was part of was actually just one big fake ecosystem designed to make a profit. I know that might sound weird now, but it'll make more sense as you watch along with me. I mean, we've had like a lot of trauma. I mean, I've never even heard of this. Like, hold on, know. hold on, hold on. So there's all these people you love, and all these people love you. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And they don't want not, anything from you. They don't need anything from you. They just love you. You know, I, I was thinking so about that's this. That's pretty nice. I despite all the up shit that you went through in your life, despite these up relationships you grew up with, couldn't be happier. No, no, not about happy. Despite all those things that could interrupt your ability to be loved and love people, you got a lot of people who love you. Well, I think that the key in my best friend, uh, Nikki. Don't explain it. Told me. Don't explain it. If you're going to get your heart broken. Don't explain it. Just take it in. Just take it in. 
But I, I agree. Stop trying to but science it. what do you want it. me to say, though? Just Stop nothing. being a nerd with your Don't facts. Don't say anything. Just take it Don't in. Don't be a nerd it. with your facts. But hey. I'm going to say a quote that resonated with me. Yeah, by give some it a second. gay guy. Just give it a second. Just give a... F- just, we love you. Even if you just took a beat and loved, took it in. You love people. There's a lot of love over here. Everything's good. We're Christians on this podcast. But I'm... If I do too much eye contact, I will probably get do emotional. What? No, but what do you mean you would get <laughs> emotional? Cock in the ground is <laughs> Don't let her out of this. Don't let her out of this. What do you mean you would no, get... No, I think it's like it's... it's. I've been, you know... Do you want me to cry? It's, I don't want you to cry. I, I, I want I to feel real emotions from you. If that's happiness, that's great. If it's sadness, that's yeah. great. If you're crying, like, I just want to, you know. Do you, do you as like, someone, can I, as please. someone who he definitely loves you, he talks about, you talked to me about years ago. I think he just wants to showcase the human you that he knows and loves. I think we can get so, a, sorry to interrupt you. Yeah. Go, go, go. No, you go. go. It's your I just, thing. I just think that, I don't know, I think that we can get so caught up, especially in our business, about like how we're perceived by a lot of times people we don't know. Mm-hmm. And then lose sight of how we're perceived by the people that we do know and we care about. And then we maybe almost take that for granted. And I do that all the time. Maybe I'll come in, I'll be frustrated or whatever. And like sometimes I like to take a second and be like, wow, man, like we got a bunch of guys that are working on this podcast that like have really f- busy lives and their own relationships and everybody's coming in to work on this one thing so that we can all be successful and they're like sacrificing, they're having time. Like we hung out for Alex's birthday on Friday and it was like so much fun to like celebrate someone else, right? We can get so focused on our own lives. It's so much fun to celebrate someone else, get drunk, be silly, make fun of each other. And it was just a great thing that we weren't filming it. We weren't making content. It was just guys Hanging out and girl, shout out to Tanya, <laughs> hanging out and enjoying Check that. The box. And I think that that's, I don't know, I think it's really important that we get caught up in that and not necessarily what someone in the comments is going to say about you. I think that. Um, love you, dude. I love you. And I think you, I think a lot of people sort of think this about me, maybe because of social media or something, but um, like right after my mom died, I had a, someone that was posting on my social media, like for me, and I kind of like forgot about it. I'm like grieving, like, you know, I take like a month, I'm totally off social media, and mm-hmm. people start, Annie Letterman, Jesse May Peluso, Tim Dillon just show up at my house unannounced, and they're like, we're worried about you. As you get older, I think there's a way to care, and you have to learn how to care properly with somebody. Everybody cares differently. Uh, totally. But and judge them by their intent. No, I. but I'm not, but I've already said that I'm not upset. You're like trying to push this thing that I'm mad I'm at them. I'm trying to push anything. I'm not mad at them. You said, call me for dinner. No, but I, but I just said, I was like, what's going on with us as a community that we stopped hanging out off camera to? So I think that a lot of- Dude, it's hard. Uh, but I think also a lot of comedy, like like Akash comedians- and I have to like plan times to hang out. <laughs> yeah. Well, we have wives, we have worlds that we want to do Totally, things. I'm like, just saying we're in a very high risk profession. Yeah. And it used to be, I think the way that we stayed sane was having offline conversations in the, you know, in the green room, in the hallway. And now it's like, save it for the pod. Like we're monetizing all of our conversations like for public consumption, which is great. It's healing. A lot of people, people love it. Can I finish before you roll your eyes? Can I finish before you roll your eyes? Okay, that's pretty deep and sort of goes with what I've said in a bunch of my previous videos. It should be obvious by now that Whitney's both smart and troubled, and when you combine that with how fake the extended Rogan universe is, it's not hard to see how she would sit back in her time of need and think, What's going on here? Why don't we just hang out like normal friends? What happened to everyone? I can't even call up my friend Andrew or Bert or Rogan for a chat without being told to save it for the pod. It's like the kiss of death. And you can see that from this episode as well. 90% of the conversation should not have been recorded. This should have been a private conversation and I think that's what Whitney was trying to say. Here she is on one of the biggest comedy podcasts in the world, trying to have a real conversation with her good friend Schultz, and he's basically trying to stage an intervention just for the views. Now, like we saw at the beginning of this video, Whitney gets emotional on other podcasts and can't stop talking about her feelings and emotions, even though she thinks it's cringy when guys do it. Okay, fine, but she's also calling out her comedy buddies for putting profits before their friendship and trying to monetize all of their conversations. So you had these like great intimate relationships, friendships with with comics, and then something happened where you felt like... It wasn't as, not with the guys you mentioned, but maybe with other people where it was, it wasn't as 
pure familial. or familial as, as you I thought? I think that it's such a... Um, You're not the only person to bring this up to me. That's, yeah, no, no, I, I think that, that there's such a deep scarcity complex. I think the type of pe person that uh, attracts to comedy is already going to be very competitive. I also have a theory that like, I break down people in my life from people that played team sports and people that didn't. But don't talk about that just yet. I know, but I'm just saying, like, I can, like, the people that didn't, don't play team sports, it's like me versus you all the time, where I always see it as a team. I think you see it as a team, you all rise, like, the ships rise together. Rogan sees everything as a team. I asked Rogan about it, and I was like, where, where did this come from? Because you're, like, a deeply competitive dude. Mm -hmm. Like, deeply competitive dude. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, why are you so, like, supportive of everybody? <laughs> well, like, it's also there's an arrogance in knowing, like, I know none of these motherfuckers are gonna eclipse me. <laughs> okay, maybe. <laughs> Bert Kreischer, I, I think I can give him a platform. I think I'll be okay. <laughs> but maybe, but maybe, maybe I, it's, I don't know, someone else. Do you know what I mean? Like maybe yeah. it's not that, like, I, I don't know. So I asked him and he was like, yeah, it's all martial arts. I go, what do you mean? He goes, I don't know, we're like doing jujitsu and like mm -hmm. a guy is trying to literally choke me out. He's trying to stop me from breathing yeah. and he's my teammate. And he's gonna help me get better at this. Uh, and he's like, yeah, if I didn't have that background to understand that like everybody can be, be get better yeah. while also competing with one another. Cause I think a lot of times people who are in very competitive industries, they think like, oh, I have to s silence that person, stop that person. Mm -hmm. You saw this happen in Hollywood a lot where it's just like, oh, this person me over, well, no, they get nothing. Jeez, Bert Kreischer can't go a day without catching strays. And did you see how delusional Schultz was at the end there? Whitney was 100% correct in her assessment of how Rogan sees the comedy podcasting community. He's so much bigger than everyone else that he's happy to have them all on his podcast and help them get some sort of recognition because he knows they'll never come close to the fame and fortune that he enjoys from JRE. I've said this before, Rogan is in full legacy mode. He knows he's part of the establishment now, so he feeds off the popularity of young and upcoming comics who don't pose a threat to him because he's already made it. It's exactly how Whitney described it. He knows Burt Kreischer isn't a threat to him, well, because... <laughs> I don't think I need to explain why. But I want to finish by sharing with you a tweet that Whitney posted defending Joe Rogan back when he was in the thick of it in 2022. He'd come under fire after a bunch of medical experts wrote an open letter to Spotify concerned that he was spreading misinformation on his podcast about the pandemic and its policies, etc. Now, this was followed by some famous singers boycotting Spotify in protest, and so Whitney took to Twitter to express her support for Papa Rogan, only to get roasted by other comedians for taking herself too seriously and trying to be too smart. Here's what she said. Comedians did not sign up to be your hero. It's our job to be irreverent and dangerous, to question authority and take you through a spooky, mental haunted house so you can arrive at your own conclusions. Stay focused on the people we pay taxes to to be moral leaders. And here are some of the replies. Comedians didn't sign up to be our heroes, but they also didn't sign up for some strange immunity from criticism. Comedians did not sign up to be your hero. It's our job to be irreverent and dangerous, to question authority and drive for hundreds of miles to tell some people in the back room of a pub that they live in an s-hole. Comedians didn't sign up to be your hero. It's our job to be irreverent and dangerous, to question authority and get chips on the way home and try to eat them while driving and ruin a perfectly good shirt with chip grease and also spill a can of Coke all in the footwells. Maybe add to be funny to the list. <laughs> a comedian's job is not to be your hero. A comedian's job is to live across the hallway from Kramer and star on a show about nothing. And so that pretty much sums up Whitney Cummings. She's smart, she's tortured, and I actually think she's kind of interesting, but unfortunately she's just not funny and overthinks almost everything. As for Schultz, well, he keeps proving time and time again that he's nothing but an internet famous comedian who thinks he can solve the world's problems one intervention at a time. Remember when comedians used to just be funny? Anyway, that's my breakdown of the podcast that exposed both Andrew Schultz and Whitney Cummings. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Big shout out to my regulars. Thanks for always turning up for me. And if you haven't subscribed yet, consider jumping on board so you don't miss out on any of my uploads. That's it from me. I'll catch you in the next one. Um, I think the takeaway from this Is that episode. this is my final appearance on the Flagrant <laughs> no, Podcast. No, you're, you're more than welcome to come every yeah. single time you want.